What's going on everybody, I'm Johnny Brooke. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to build this pour over stand. Stay tuned. So I decided to use some more of the old redwood fencing my dad had given me for this build. So the first step was milling the wood to size. If you don't have access to a joiner, planer, or a table saw, you could just as easily buy pre-milled lumber from your local home center and make the cuts with a miter saw, circular saw, or even a hand saw. If you're going to purchase pre-milled lumber, you'll want to buy one by six stock. Once my wood was milled down, I made my cuts at the table saw on my crosscut sled. The measurements on pour over stands are really flexible and will depend on the type of mug you'd like to use. I measured the largest mug I use for my coffee and came up with an inner dimension of about five inches square. I cut the first two pieces at six and a half inches since they need to be a bit longer to account for the width of the side pieces and then cut the side pieces at five inches. Next, I found the center of one of the six and a half inch pieces by drawing diagonal lines from each corner and then drilled a small pilot hole in the center. This pilot hole will help to guide the Forstner bit. Before drilling a hole with a Forstner bit of this size, two inches in this case, uh, you need to lower the RPM of your drill press or hand drill. Once you've set your RPM, drill the hole. I like to go halfway through on one side and then flip the piece and complete the hole from the other side. This really helps prevent blowout and the pilot hole we drilled earlier is perfect for assisting with this. To assemble the stand, I just used drywall screws and glue. I marked my hole placement for the screws as I wanted to plug the holes with a contrasting oak dowel to add some accents to the final piece. I drilled the holes to full depth using a 3 8 inch countersink bit and drove in the inch and a quarter screws. Also, uh, these right angle clamps are really helpful here. On the bottom of the stand, I wanted to add some feet. I found these little oak plug buttons at my local home center, but the diameter of the plug was half an inch, so I needed to make the 3 8 inch holes I drilled before a little bigger on the bottom. Unfortunately, when I went to expand the hole, I was met with a bunch of tear out. Redwood is a really soft wood, and this hole is extremely close to the edge, so tear out I think was unavoidable, and I just decided to drill the half inch holes closer to the center of the stand, away from the edge, and this worked out fine. I just eyeballed the placement on the holes. Next, I needed to sand the inside surfaces before assembly. Unfortunately, the pieces were too small to use with my random orbit sander, so I was left to sand by hand, which I hate. I worked my way through the grit, starting at 80 grit, moving to 120 grit, and then finishing with 180 grit. After sanding, I assembled the stand using glue and screws. I added clamps just to help close up any gaps and left the glue to dry. While the glue was drying, I cut small pieces from the 3 8 inch oak dowel to be used as plugs. I used my Veritas carcass saw for this and it is a tool I absolutely love using. The saw is filed for cross cutting and made really quick work of the dowel. I sanded the edges of the plugs lightly just to aid in the fit and then glued them in. And you want to make sure to pound the plugs in with the mallet to make sure they're fully seated. After the glue dried, I cut the plugs flush with a flush cut saw and then it was time for final sanding. Again, I worked my way through the grits, making sure any deeper marks were removed with the 80 grit sandpaper before moving on. And to sand the inside of the hole, I used sandpaper wrapped around a dowel, which works really well. I rounded over the edges of the stand using an eighth inch radius roundover bit after sanding with 120 grit and then finished the sanding process with 180 grit. The roundover bit doesn't reach the inside corners of the piece, so make sure to tidy those up by hand. I attached the feet with five minute epoxy and again used a mallet to make sure they were fully seated and then let them dry for about 20 minutes before moving on to finishing. I used a semi-gloss spray polyurethane finish for this project and I've been really satisfied with my results from this finish lately. You just spray on a few thin coats, let it dry for about 20 minutes, recoat and repeat. I usually put three or four coats on and there's no need to sand in between coats as the finish really levels itself well. And on small projects like this, I find spray can finishes much more convenient than dragging out an HVLP system or even using foam brushes in a traditional wipe on finish. Once finish is applied, the pour over stand is complete. All right guys, hopefully you enjoyed that project. This was a relatively simple build. This was like a less than 24 hour total build time. Very simple, very accessible project. Again, if you don't have a planer or a jointer or anything like that, you can buy pre-milled lumber and really build this with uh, just a basic saw and a drill. Really easy, a lot of fun, and I think it'd be great, especially as a gift for any coffee lover in your life. In case you don't know, pour over is a style of coffee brewing, basically making a single cup and you manually pour over the water. That's how it gets its name. I use pour over every single day. I'm a huge coffee nerd. Uh, the two inch hole should work 
for, uh, this is the Kalita Wave. It should also work for the Hario V60 along with a number of other pour over devices. So uh, it should be pretty flexible. I think that's gonna do it guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you don't already, please go ahead and subscribe to our channel. We have new project videos every Tuesday and new weekly maker roundups every Thursday. Also, if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment telling us what you liked about it. It's really helpful for us. And then last, if you wanna support us and see some kind of behind the scenes stuff going on at Crafted, uh, check us out at Patreon. It's patreon.com slash crafted workshop. Also, if you're still here, you might have noticed we have a little bit of a rebrand going on. I changed the name from Crafted Magazine to Crafted Workshop. Magazine was just kind of an outdated title for us. I no longer publish in the issue format. It's all video and it's all on YouTube. Hopefully you like the new name. All right, guys, thanks again. And until next time, happy building.